what's going on today, and in particular since uh, 2013 in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, shores, in part, in more concretely in Syria and Iraq, are um, the manifestation of what we can consider to be the third uh, period uh, in the evolution, in the recent evolution of global jihadism. Uh, the first period started uh, in 1988 when Al-Qaeda was founded and ended in uh, uh, 2001 with the 9-11 attacks. As from that moment on, uh, during the second period, uh, Al-Qaeda decentralized among other things, creating territorial uh, regional branches, such as Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or Al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia, Al-Qaeda uh, in the Islamic Maghreb, uh, forged relationships with a number of organizations all across the globe. Uh, the phenomenon uh, evolved from uh, virtually uh, centralized organization are one to a polymorphous uh, phenomenon involving a number uh, of uh, individual and collective actors. And, and that uh, period uh, was finished um, with the starting of the so-called Arab Spring, the upheavals which uh, shaped power in, <clears throat> in a number of um, Arab countries in North Africa and the Middle East. <clears throat> in those days, you might remember that an, a large number of uh, uh, commentators and analysts and scholars um, indulged in the uh, idea that the Arab Spring was a major blow to Al-Qaeda and jihadist uh, phenomenon as a whole. Uh, it was that Al-Qaeda was virtually defeated because of that. Um, the fact is that all Al-Qaeda was Al-Qaeda, including territorial branches. All Al-Qaeda was waiting for was the right opportunity for them to become uh, actors. When Osama bin Laden was killed in Abbottabad, uh, he had this assessment about the, the, the Arab Spring. Um, uh, he was just uh, uh, um, strategic about it, but wanted to uh, wait for the right occasion at the same time that he was eager to re-centralize Al-Qaeda because uh, he thought that many groups, including in particular one of Al-Qaeda's branches, uh, was acting uh, all too much against uh, the main directions of Al-Qaeda Central. And that was Al-Qaeda in Iraq. That was the, the, as from 2006, known Islamic State of Iraq. Uh, and precisely, um, it, it was out of the Islamic State of Iraq that the traditional dispute between uh, ISI leadership and Al-Qaeda Central leadership became, became finally a rupture. Um, uh, in, uh, in the spring of 2003, uh, which became uh, the more evident with the uh, um, June 2014 proclamation of the caliphate and the renaming of the Islamic State of Iraq uh, as finally uh, the Islamic State period uh, before uh, you, you may well remember, uh, the group was um, presented as the Islamic State of Iraq and Sham and Levant uh, for a period. So, over the past years, global jihadism evolved from a polymorphous phenomenon to a deeply divided one. Uh, the division due to now the existence of two main matrices, Al-Qaeda on the one hand, and the Islamic State on the other hand. But the phenomenon has also evolved uh, concerning its center of gravity, 
moving from um, South Asia to precisely uh, Eastern Mediterranean. And, and from there, expanding to other uh, areas around the Mediterranean, South and North. Al Qaeda and the Islamic State uh, basically share the same ideology commonly known as jihadist Salafism. Although it will be a mistake to uh, consider that both organizations share exactly the same view of Salafist jihadism. Because Al Qaeda, Al -Qaeda applies uh, uh, a rational, um, uh, calculative understanding of uh, jihadist insurgency, jihadist subversion, whereas the Islamic State, although, although benefiting from um, individuals with a very strong, um, with very strong uh, strategic military capabilities within its leadership, uh, has adopted a version, an apocalyptic, prophetic version of Salafi jihadism. Uh, recently, we had some new documents released from the Abu Tabat compound. Among them, among them, uh, a very interesting document written by the man who used to be um, Saled al uh, um, Somali, who used to be uh, Al Qaeda's chief of external operations, explaining the reasons why uh, the U.S. should be considered the main target, and attacks in the U.S. are those who will have a real impact over the population and political elites, and neither killing. Um, uh, U.S. military uh, uh, outside the U.S. not attacking U.S. allies has the effect that Al Qaeda wants uh, ultimately. So it's, it's quite, quite um, uh, thinking in terms of uh, ends and means all, all the time. This is not exactly the way the Islamic State is proceeding uh, uh, nowadays with this different apocalyptic um, uh, prophetic version. Uh, of Salafi jihadism they are uh, hanging to. Um, don't, want, don't want to go into detail now, maybe if over the uh, questions and answers time um, you want to, we might, we might reflect a little bit more on uh, the meaning of this, but uh, used to mention that the very, very, the very, very denomination of uh, the so-called Islamic State's uh, propaganda magazine, Dabiq, says it all. That is the place where the unstoppable final battle between uh, Islam and the Christianity and the believers will take place, uh, and Jesus will descend to, to tell Christians that they were all wrong, and, and Islam will dominate over the human race which is kind of what the Islamic State is emphasizing as the ultimate goal, to reconstitute fully the caliphate. Uh, they already started. You know? When Osama bin Laden was about to be killed, uh, he was thinking about changing Al-Qaeda's name, because he thought Al-Qaeda was, was, um, was suffering from uh, a, 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 a crisis of popular image uh, among Muslims. Wait. Mainly, mainly, not only, mainly because Al Qaeda and Al Qaeda's uh, uh, affiliated entities were killing mostly Muslims, Shia, or other kind, but may, mostly Muslims were uh, the main target for Al Qaeda. And among the names that he was thinking about, uh, there was this one uh, whose translation would be something like. Those who, be, those who will be refounding, those who will be reconstituting the caliphate. Hmm? Well, now the caliphate is there, not, not the real one, but it's, something is there which is understood as the, as the real one by many people. A minority, a very small minority, but a significant one when it comes to security threats in general, and uh, the terrorist threat in particular, when not, an existential threat as such for some countries. It was the case, it is the case nowadays in Syria and Iraq, as it was the case uh, um, 
three years ago in northern Mali uh, um, when, when a coalition of uh, jihadist organizations led by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb uh, took over the, the, the territory. True, um, Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State have uh, important differences in, in, in strategies and tactics, and it is often now stressed the competition between the two for a hegemony within global jihadism as a whole. Um, I will be more than cautious now to stress this idea of competition and rivalry, because we have already a number of um, uh, uh, indications uh, suggesting that what looks a competition might, might be evolving into an actual cooperation. Um, we saw this, for instance, concerning the, the attacks in Paris early this year. Four individuals, all coordinated, um, two of them linked to Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and two of them sided with the so-called Islamic State. And nevertheless, they, they never took for granted the division between the two organizations and uh, cooperated, coordinated uh, among themselves to carry out the, the deadly attacks uh, early this year. Um, we also have evidence on Al Qaeda's Jabhat al Nusra, uh, Syria's official branch, and the so called Islamic State cooperating in the takeover of the Jarmuk. Uh, Palestinian refugee camp. We have indications of overlapping between uh, uh, Al-Qaeda uh, individuals and um, Islamic State-oriented individuals in Northern Africa. And one should not forget the fact that, Al that Jabhat al-Nusra or al-Nusra Front and the Islamic State are cooperating nowadays in Lebanon. So, um, the Islamic State is nowadays I mean, is, is proving to be more resilient than expected. Um, is losing some ground here, but gaining some ground there, um, and uh, expanding as well, not just maintaining uh, the territory under its control in Syria and Iraq, but expanding towards some uh, colonies in Libya, uh, towards northeastern Nigeria, uh, the Sinai Peninsula, still here in the Eastern Mediterranean region, uh, and so on. And it's having a tremendous impact on uh, entities and organizations until now uh, aligned or oriented or associated with uh, Al-Qaeda. Um, for instance, Factions of Al Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb um, decided to openly break away with the organization and found um, new entities aligned with the Islamic State. For instance, the soldiers of the Caliphate in Algeria. The Islamic State, if there were or if there is any any battle. Uh, between Islamic State and, um, and Al-Qaeda for human and material resources. Uh, one could easily conclude that the, the, the so-called Islamic State is winning this war uh, for the time being, is being, winning this, this battle. Um, never ever a jihadist insurgent or terrorist organization uh, had accumulated such a vast amount of resources and exerting control of such a vast amount of territory and such amount of people. Uh, but this is also affecting 
um, other Muslim countries, um, if we consider that the Islamic State now has something in between 26,000 and 30,000, 31,000 armed militants, a number, a figure which might be extended up to perhaps 150,000, considering um, those who join uh, on a partial basis. Um, um, no less, no less than, than uh, 20,000 of those individuals, the, the, those who, who play a, a more permanent function within the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq come from abroad, are, are the so-called foreign, foreign fighters. Foreign terrorist fighters is the formula now used by the United Nations, um, the European Union, and so on. And there are a number of countries severely affected by the jihadist mobilization. Because remember that those, those who become foreign fighters are just, are just uh, one indicator of the extent of such mobilization. Then you have to add all those who become radicalized but don't move for one or the other reason, because they can't or because they don't want. Um, uh, and <clears throat> there are a number of countries such as in particular uh, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Tunisia. How interesting, Tunisia. Um, advancing democratically, <clears throat> at the same time then providing uh, the largest contingent of foreign fighters to the Islamic State in, in Syria and Iraq. Uh, um, and this jihadist mobilization is also affecting, this is my, my very last point, just to being over the table, is also affecting uh, Western Europe. Um, as I already had the opportunity to discuss uh, this point with a couple of you this, this morning, and very interestingly so. But how, how important it is that within, to mention that within Western Europe, um, it is an accurate estimate to say at this point that no less than 5,000 individuals have left Western Europe, have left the European Union territory to join Jabhat al nusra and, and mostly the Islamic State. 80% uh, of them, or more than 80% of them, actually join the Islamic State. Uh, they think the Islamic State is delivering, uh, is successful. Uh, the dark era was fine, but now um, the, the, uh, the, the organization and the leader who is calling the shots is Baghdadi. And, and uh, in addition to that, uh, the mobilization requested by the Islamic State is, is uh, notoriously different from that of uh, Al-Qaeda. Because the call is not just to join an organization. Facing difficulties in Pakistan, facing difficulties in, 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 in the Sahel, uh, in, in despite of some opportunities, facing difficulties in, in uh, Yemen, and so on. The, the call made by the Islamic State is for you, young Muslim in whatever the country, to come and join our, our new society not just our organization, our new society. That means the call is not just to become a fighter. And maybe in that sense, the, the expression for interviews fighters is somewhat misleading. Because not all those who mobilize, who radicalize and go uh, uh, to Syria, Iraq, have the intention to become fighters. In particular, the uh, uh, women. Women are not for interviews fighters. Uh, stick to censor, have other roles in um, to um, be assigned and actually to perform. Uh, the, interest, the very interesting thing with respect to Western Europe, something not to be applied to uh, countries with predominantly Muslim populations, is that jihadist mobilization just reached unprecedented levels nowadays. 
if compared with previous mobilizations in the 90s and uh, early um, uh, 21st century, uh, is affecting, above all, countries where the overwhelming majority of Muslims are second generations. Not so much Spain, not so much Italy, not so much Greece, neither, con neither taking into account absolute figures, nor taking into account um, um, proportion with respect to the total population, nor taking into account the proportion with respect to the Muslim population. There are nine countries badly affected by this phenomenon. I uh, hope I don't miss any, 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 but France, Belgium, the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Denmark, uh, um, Norway, uh, Finland. I say that correctly. Um, so taking this fact into account on the one hand, I will end with this, and on the other hand, considering that following the empirical evidence that we have until now, the diversity of socioeconomic profiles is huge. Not all those who go are individuals extracted from the banlieue and uh, drop out from, from high schools. You have, mainly in the UK case, individuals with a middle class background and university education. Not a surprise, not a surprise. The vast majority of individuals convicted in the UK for jihadist terrorism offenses are college educated people. Um, taking into account those two things, the the, the, the suggestion is that within second generations, that is, young people living in a diaspora situation, um, there are important segments, minority by important segments, suffering from a severe identity crisis, identity problems. They do not identify with the nation they were born or raised in. They don't identify with the nation their parents came from. And under specific personal and situational conditions, chiefly among them, to become ex exposed to a radicalizing agent other than internet, because internet is not usually enough to, fu uh, to um, fulfill the process of radicalization. Face-to-face -face interaction is still critical, not to mention recruitment per se. So they become vulnerable to this idea promoted by Al-Qaeda and nowadays in particular by the Islamic State that the nation they really belong to is the nation of Islam. And the true career for this identity is to be found not in any particular concrete um, Islamic State. It's not to be found in the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. It's not to be found uh, in the Arab League. It's to be found in the Islamic State, in the Caliphate, and to a lesser extent um, in, in uh, Al Qaeda. That, that, I, that was my, my, my very last point. I'm slightly over my 20 minutes. I do apologize for that, um, Chairman, and thank you very much. Thank you very much.